everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and I have some information for you before we go on to do some watercolour painting in this video today. First of all, just a, a little bit on the move and whatnot and how it's going to affect things in this stash shop. The last video before we pack everything up is going to be Sunday the 25th of June. So after today's video you'll have two more Sundays and then there will be no more videos on the channel at all until further notice until we get moved. In terms of the shop I still have some items to go up which I've got here beside me. I'll show you them those in a little second. I will be taking last orders on that same day which is again Sunday the 25th of June. So I'll be shutting the shop on the Monday. So if you'd like to pick up any last minute bargains, that is the last day that you can do so. And I will ship those items out on the Wednesday, which is the 28th of June. And again, the shop will then be closed completely until further notice, till I gather myself together. Okay, so stuff that's in the stash shop, just while we're on the subject. I have uh, the last of the Eclectic Erudite sticker and postcard packs. And this is the succulent set. And you can see there's three really cute little stickers. And this postcard selection here and these have like the watermark of the design on the back of them where they're really really nice. In addition to that I have some higher value items. I have decided to sell my Schmincke paints. Somebody actually donated the Academy paints for me to try so I have a little set of those in there but I also have the, the Schmincke Horridam paints and obviously room to build up your collection as well. These paints are really really expensive. If you buy this Schmincke tin tin alone is £40 here in the UK. It is a pretty pricey item but I feel like someone could get really good use out of these because I really don't use watercolour enough to justify having these sitting about doing nothing. Absolute bargain if you fancy grabbing that. The other really exciting thing I've got in here as well is uh, this a set of Karen Brush Marker Pros. I had no intentions of parting with these so this is the set of 26 plus a colourless blender. You guys know me, I am not excited about markers and I love these and I actually went and bought these for myself and it's the only markers apart from Copics that I've actually spent my own money on. Um, I have the larger set now so I have decided to sell these. There is a picture on the listing in the shop showing the pen that's got the least amount of ink in it which unsurprisingly it's a green one and there's still loads in it. So if you fancy grabbing hold of these, again these retail for about £50 here in the UK just now, want to grab yourself a bargain, you can head over to the stash shop. There's other goodies in there too. Check the website out, live links down below, you know all this by now. Thank you to everyone who purchased things in the penny sale, that was a great success. Um, I was really pleased, everything is gone. So uh, thank you to all of you, it's much 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 appreciated and uh, continue grabbing some bargains before we shut up shop. All right, so this is a fun one today. Whilst I've been packing things up and I have been doing it quite gradually, I, I came across this and I thought this might be fun to do today. This actually came from a subscription box and it was the Let's Make Art box. It's primarily a watercolour box and it hails from the US. I am priced out of getting that box over here because they charge something ridiculous like $60 for shipping, which obviously just not prepared to do. But this box was gifted to me, I think it might have been two or three years ago. It must have been three years ago. It was Daria that gifted me one of these as part, like for as a birthday present. And this was one of the projects that I never got round to. So in these little packs, uh, the, the Let's Make Art box are great boxes are great if you're in the US and you want to get into painting I highly recommend them and I'm going to explain here what we've got so the project is a uh, cowboy boots that's got some foliage growing out of it so you get a little print here of the finished article so you can use that as a reference image if you so desire but the thing I like about these projects is there's several ways to go about it and it is designed for all levels of a watercolour artist you can see here there is a tutorial step by step and this is sort of like minimal guidance on how to get to where you're going but on the back here there's um, instructions there's tutorial videos on their website so you can watch the tutorial, which will be like an edited down, kind of the way I would normally do a video. But there's also a paint along video as well, so you can actually have some hand holding the whole way through. In addition to that, 
wait for it, it gets better. They, they give you paper and the paper's very nice. It's, it's quite thick. And you can see there, there's two sheets. So one to practice on or one to paint on. And if you make a boo-boo, you've got another sheet. But they also provide an outline for you. So if you're not a confident sketcher, uh, but you like to paint, you can put this onto tracing paper or whatever you want to do. Or you can just copy it if that's what you want to do as well. So there's like this is for absolutely everyone. And that's why I think these boxes are fabulous. It's just such a shame that they don't ship them to the UK for a reasonable price because I would review these boxes more often. However, we are going to do this today. I'm particularly attached to this because these are very similar to my actual cowboy boots and they look a little something like this. So as you can see, that's uncanny. And canny. So I thought that would be really good fun today and I can use my own boot as reference if I so desire. But it's not getting sat on the desk because that's bad luck. So let's get cracked on and make a start with this. Um, for my level of paintiness and general arty skill in this, I am going to jump between the, the sort of cut down, you know, like the slimline paper tutorial here and just using my eyeballs. Because uh, a lot of this really is, you know, like the foliage and everything, it's just like makeup as you go. So I'm going to jump between the two. I will let, I will call out what's going on in this paper tutorial as well. In the box as well, you get provided with paints. You can see the colours are down here. I am going to use my own paints and I'm just going to use my Windsor & Newton Cotman studio set here. So these are student grade paints. I, I, I use these for every, <laughs> everything. All right, so I'm just trying to get myself organised here. I've got my usual, I've got the Llama Pot full of paintbrushes. I'll pick something appropriate in due course. I've got some water with a paint puck to clean up my brush in and I've also got some separate clean water and a pipette as well as a ceramic mixing palette just in case we decide to get fancy. I've also got some Pez sweets here and that's because the lovely Julia K from Julia K Art Studios sent me a Tom Nook Pez dispenser. For the uninitiated, Tom Nook is a character from Animal Crossing which I absolutely love. So they want it. And these are fizzy ones, I'm going to put them in there later. Anywho, not relevant. One of the things I really like about these projects from this is the fact that we're on American sized paper because the US sizes work in inches. Uh, so <laughs> I feel as if I've got loads of room. It's so good. So the first thing we want to do is sketch out our outline. The, this kind of like slimmed it down tutorial that comes in the box. The first step here is the painting part. Obviously they want to go in with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the finished article as my reference photo um, to, to just like draw the basic outline. We want to leave quite a bit of room at the top here and that's going to be for the foliage so we can get pretty fancy. In terms of proportions, the sketching out part is often overlooked because we assume that people are able to do it. So I want to explain to you how I'm going to do this by eye. When I look at this finished image here, I'm breaking it down by eye and I, I notice that a very small proportion of this finished image is dedicated to the flat part, you know, to like the sole of the boot. Like when you see it in proportion to the rest of the paper, it's a really small percentage. So what I want to do is just make a mark for myself. I don't want mine coming right down to the, the very bottom of the paper. Um, so I'm going to kind of like draw an imaginary line. I'm going to do it in real life just so like to keep us right. So that's how much space I want at the bottom, but I also want that much space at the top. So again, I'm just going to put that across there really roughly. From what I've got left, I want to split this up. So the bottom part of the boots are going to take up maybe somewhere around there. And then what's left, if I put my finger across there, the boots take up half of what's left and the foliage takes up half of what's left. So this section here, I want to roughly split in half. I always find this easier to do this up and down, you might not. So I've got myself some guidelines there and I've done that all by myself. No one's explained that, but that helps me to gauge how big or small my cowboy boots are going to be. So I'm just going to start drawing in these shapes and I'm doing this purely by eye based on what I can see here. So again, you don't have to be too worried about the proportions of this part compared to this part. Depends on how big the feet are. It depends what depth of cowboy boot is. Well, because you get mid-calf cowboy boots and you get boots that come all the way up to just under the knee. So, you know, you, you're, you're in a pretty forgiving place right now. <laughs> most of you will be familiar with the anatomy of feet because we all have feet. That's really helpful. And most of us have access to shoes as well. Maybe not boots, but definitely shoes. I just wanted to mention as well, I'm using an FP 
pencil here. F stands for fine. So this is a great sketching pencil and it's my favourite, favourite grade to use for stuff like this. And it erases really, really well. And again, this is one of these things, like I feel this is really important to show because in a lot of, especially the, the bigger YouTubers that have got these lovely polished professional looking videos, they skip so many steps in the sketching process. And this is the most important step because if you don't have this right, your finished picture, doesn't matter how good you are with paint, your finished picture is going to look off. So it's important that you do spend the time here. And I'm already seeing it look as if I've got a really fat, thick boot here. So I'm going to bring that around a little bit. I'm going to slim that down slightly. And the other boot, because it's sitting slightly behind, you can see the sole is sitting slightly up from this one. So it makes sense that the top of the boot is also going to be slightly higher as well. And that is just slightly, again, the, that's roughly the middle of the paper. So the, the, pot, the, like, the edge of that boot is just slightly past the middle. Really simple observations like that can be super, super helpful. One of the things that gets packed in the last box to close and first box to open is my sketching pencil case. So it doesn't matter how many things I pack away, needed eraser will always be here. After I've finished filming this video, I am gonna pack away all my watercolor supplies. Uh, that was that was part of the deal, part of the reason I wanted to do this video. So all my watercolor paintbrushes, and palettes as well, the paint pucks and the, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's all going. That is all going in a box once we're done here, which is kind of sad, but kind of nice. I feel as if this toe isn't turned up enough. Like this is at the wrong angle. I feel like that needs to be, because this is the thing with actual cowboy boots. Um, that your toe starts to turn up. Can you see that there? And that's just obviously the way that you walk. And that is a very natural position for a well-worn cowboy boot. And I don't feel that that's, I feel that these are very, um, these are very new cowboy boots. And I feel like I really want to turn these toes up a little bit more. I'm gonna leave that middle line down there because that's actually gonna be a feature of the finished article. So now that we've got these boots drawn in, we're gonna pay a bit more attention to the actual printed tutorial here. Uh, start with the outline and paint the first boot using a light brown wash. The first thing I notice about these brown colours is we're heading into red and yellowish browns. So I want to veer more towards the um, the raw sienna, yellow ochre, raw umber kind of category. I'm gonna start with the yellow ochre. Just gonna cover this area with a really light wash of this. This is mostly water and I've done it intentionally because I'm going to use a little bit of wet and wet here. You can see from this initial phase here it is very um, patchy. So there's been a lot of mixing on the paper going on there and that is what I fully intend to do. Let's get that in there. Gone, gone over my pencil lines already, damn it. And um, when you're using a, a sort of a limited um, tutorial like this, you, you need to be using your observational skills. So we're very yellow down at the toe. Um, so we're going to grab a little bit more of that, concentrate that a little bit better down there and bring it up and round. And the lovely thing about this is you don't have to follow it to the letter. Like that's half the fun. And there's a bit more kind of like burnt sienna colours, so like more orangish colours at the top there. And a lo luckily for me, burnt sienna is only a couple of doors down from my yellow ochre. And build a little bit of that up. I'm going to need that a bit more concentrated than that chip gem. There we go. And you can spend as much time farting about with this as you want. I'm going to work in some of these lines here. And the, there's there's a good bit down the bottom along the sole here. Well, or the not the sole, the bottom of the upper. Most of the artworks here, um, specifically from the box that um, Daria sent to me, the artwork is by Sarah Cray and her painting style is quite loose. Uh, I am not a loose painter, but I'm doing my best here to sort of emulate that and, you know, embrace that as the, you know, in the, in the spirit of the of the project. Okay, so I still feel that's a bit light compared to what's going on here and it's a little bit orangish. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of the light red. The The thing about the Cotman watercolors is they do dry a little bit lighter. So you kind of have to be a bit brave um, when you're, you know, when you're, when you're doing the doing and go for it. I've got lots of water in the paper here though. So I've got plenty of room for the, the paint to meander about and do its own thing. 
And it doesn't matter if it doesn't match the, the tutorial titty, but as long as you've got that general feeling, you're good. So the second step here says paint the second boot and then do a second layer using a darker value for the shading of the boots. So we've kind of done a little bit there, but we can go darker. So I'm just going to repeat this process again. So I'm almost going wet and wet with this. So there we go, I've got some of that. Burning skin off. Okay, so for a darker layer then, we are going to add in this light red, this one down here. And um, you, can, you can actually see it better on the reference image, you can see it is quite dark, so we may even go into some brown here, um, you know, really give it a, really give it some colour. Yeah, so just mixed in a little bit of that light red with some of the Van Dyke brown, same there. I think I'm going to put a little bit more around here as well. So I'm just going by eye here, just using this reference image to add in some more of this colour. Just in a few spots. Okay, the next step, which is step three here, says mixing all the colours together, paint the sole of the boots. Um, so this looks like sort of browny reddish colours. I think I'm going to stick with this Van Dyke brown, uh, maybe mixed with a tiny bit of the red. But there seems to be, because you're mixing the colours that came in here, there's a little bit of magenta in there as well. Which uh, I'm just going to stick in some some permanent rose just for, just for fun, basically. Yeah, okay. It's not dark enough, though. Okay, so I've got like a sort of sepia colour here. Um, I have put a little bit of the magenta type colour in, but I think it's mostly lost. <laughs> anyway, and that sepia colour, that magenta is actually just poking through there, um, which is one of the really nice things about having a little bit of transparency in your paint. So I'm just leaving a slight white edge so that that doesn't bleed into itself. Um, but you know, with the two separate soles, I just want to make sure that they look separate and they stay separate. So yeah, let that dry and uh, you can see in here, just in the heel, that is very dark. So I'm going to use some black to get that facet there. Okay, so now I'm just going to go straight for the, uh, the lamp black with my brush here. Grab a wee bit of that. I want to double up on this uh, sole colour here. Like I just feel that it's not enough. Let's get a second layer of that in. It's actually turned into a very pleasant colour. Just avoid that black just now until it's dry. Okay, the next step says when your boots are dry, use a dark brown to paint the seams and designs on the boots. Okay, so I'm going to go to a smaller brush for this. So I think I'm going to grab one of my sea white brushes, my trusty sea white brushes. I like these because they're a bit stiffer. So when you're looking to get some detail in there, you've got, um, you know, you've got that room for manoeuvre. I've got a size six here. I still think that might be too big, honestly. I might jump between the six and the two. That sounds good to me. So we can actually work away on this anyway. Um, the, the, the soles are doing their thing down the bottom here. So I'm going to grab, um, I want to, I don't know what I want to do here actually, I kind of want to make this a kind of reddish colour but then using a thirsty brush technique I want to lift some of it in places you know to make it look as if it's been used, a bit more of a distressed look and then just cheeky cheeky pop in a tiny little bit of that yellow ochre while that's still wet in there so that it's in keeping, you know, with the with the rest of the boot. So do that, and then do the do the thirsty brush again, just very gently. Okay, that's uh, that's good enough for me. And then with this smaller brush, I'm just going to go in with the the Van Dyke brown. So this is going to be really concentrated, and you can see there, like that's that's what we want. That's what we're looking for. And I can start to work on some of these areas here. Now there is there's like a crease here in this boot which is um, it's actually part of the, the design on the boot and it just wasn't talked about. So I'm going to stick that in with this smaller brush here just before I do anything else. There we go. So that's kind of obvious that that's been, uh, it's been walked in a little bit. You know, that's the creases there. Well worn. So across here. And I'm going to keep this quite dark. Now bear in mind this is going to dry lighter than it is. And then we've got this um, seam, which I've left in in pencil, if you remember. Now, if I look at my own boot, the pattern on mine's fairly intricate, to be fair. Um, there, there's a lot going on there. There is a lot going on there. But we can take some inspiration from it. I kind of want to smooth off that edge at the top there. That was a bit messy. There we go. 
And I'm just going to, I don't know how much of this we're going to actually deal with because I'm probably going to have a lot of foliage. So I might fill in that back bootstrap at a later stage. We'll see how it goes. Now I need to, I feel like I need to put some stitching on the toe as well, like, because that's, that's what makes cowboy boots cowboy boots, if you ask me. Like, mine's got a really pretty pattern on the toe, but I think most of them have got this kind of pattern. So let's, let's just use this as an actual reference, see how much we're going to see. Yeah, just to make them look a bit more, a bit more sort of interesting. Maybe somewhere in there, again, not really making too much of a fuss of that. There we go. Okay, I'm happy with that. The next step is start by adding the greenery. Woo! Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my um, number ten brush here. I've also got this. You've seen this has been lurking here. Um, this is <laughs> Jackson's Raven brush. You get really nice leaf shapes with this brush. Um, it's it's more of a mop brush, honestly. Um, it's quite big, but that's going to be good for a little bit of variation here. So I am just going to move this down a bit. Now I've deliberately cut this bit off because I've decided I want something trailing down here. So again, I'm, I want to put that in first. Probably I'm dying to do with this big brush. Um, let's just grab some Hooker's Green Dart and then I want to put a tiny bit of this sepia colour in with it. Okay, and let's just like suck that all up. So if I do this now though, oh yes. It gives you such, you know, that really nice shape because of the tip of the, the paintbrush. I've been dying to do that. <laughs> since we started right so that right that's me happy <laughs> that's all i wanted that brush for right the way that i would tackle this personally is by putting some stems in first so i probably like a, a dark green so again grab that hooker's green dark but in a much more concentrated fashion than what we've got going on here i'm going to mix it straight in with this sepia color and just see how that goes and again i feel as if i just want something like hanging out a little bit you know as if somebody's really gone to town i was thinking about this earlier and this really reminds me of um of Wally with his little boot and you know how he's got his little plant in it. If anybody hasn't seen that uh, Disney Pixar film, I highly recommend. There is virtually no dialogue in the first half of the film, but that's kind of what makes it charming. So I just want to put in a couple of little leaves here and there. Now really, I, I kind of feel like um, if, you, if you've gotten this far, you're at the kind of point where you don't really need a tutorial after this because it's now down to, well, how much, you know, how, how much time do you want to spend and how many layers of these plants do you want to have in here? And the answer is forever and loads, obviously. Oh, that looks so good. See, I knew there was something worth being a hanging flower. And see, I can let those dry and then stick another couple of layers on top of them. That's going to work quite well as well. Um, And let's mix, um, let's mix a little bit of sap green leaves. See, there's ones here that have got little, bit of, little bits of yellow in them as well. Well, so let's let's start like that. You know, just get get a little bit of green in there. What's that green? Let's grab this yellow. Now you could you could spend a, a significant amount of time here, and uh, mixing different greens and you know really sort of going to town, and making this um you know incredibly complex and layered and lush. You know, as if someone's tried to make a bouquet. I don't understand why someone would make a bouquet out of cowboy boots, but I'm not judging. Okay, now that that's dry, we're going to go back in with some more of this sap green. Frondy bits. <laughs> is that even a phrase? I don't know what it is now. Let's go for more of um, a turquoise colour, I think. I've got this Viridian colour as well. Let's go for a bit of that. That's fun. You could do lots lots of flowers as well. I'm quite, I'm quite enjoying the kind of subtlety of the... Um, of the yellow ochre and what that's done. Got a little escapee down the boot there. Fill in this gap a little bit here as well. We'll let that start to dry somewhat. Yeah, okay, so I kind of want some more flowers, so I'm going to go back to this yellow ochre. There we go, a bit more concentrated. There we go, mix that in a little bit, make this a bit more exotic looking in here, a bit fuller. So I'm just jumping between the greens now. Here and just sort of filling in the gaps at the base here, you know, make this look quite sort of full, you know, as if everything's really stuffed in at the bottom there. So this this is purely just a preference thing now. This is for my own my own pleasure. See, this is the point as I mentioned earlier. This is where you just kind of like go and do your own thing. <laughs> you know, you've you've gotten this far. You've managed fine. So off you go now. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Okay, I feel like I just want another couple of pretty big leaves here now as well. 
and um, just sort of to balance this side out. So I'm going to try not to stick my hand in that. That'd be a really good idea. So let's have one with like a big pointy point on it. Oh yeah. Maybe put a little bit of a vein up in there. Look. Oh yeah. Um, I think I think we're done here. Sun's starting to look. Oh, sunshine. Oh, what's that? Okay. Well, the the last step, interestingly, um, says done. <laughs> That's, that's what it says on it. So I think we can safely say that we are. I'm a little bit off centre, but not drastically so. Um, but yeah, that is a lot of fun. I might just trim that and, you know, make it look a bit better. But yeah, so there you go. Uh, one of the project tutorials from a long time ago from Let's Make Art. And as you can see, I've had a lot of fun created something, you know, pre pretty fun, pretty colourful little bit different so if you are in the US and you have access to this box I would highly recommend they do provide everything in the box they provide the paints and everything so you're good to go from the start and it's one of those boxes that's great for any skill level doesn't matter where you are in your art journey so that is it for today guys don't forget to check out the stash shop and all the bits and pieces that have gone in and I will see you back in the cave on Thursday for another colouring video back with our Galapagos penguins so have a great day everyone and bye bye for now